own is the way the truth and the life and that no man can come to the father except through him a revival is a season of awakening a season of the demonstration of the power of God a season where God decides to make a statement to the inhabitants within a territory that I am still God and I am still all powerful usually what happens is that when there are no apostolic and prophetic voices within a territory there will usually be a gradual decline an absence is that true an absence from the precepts keeping the precepts of God and all through scripture you would read that every time the people of God deviate from the ways of God they surrender themselves to their enemies and they become captives and in their cry and in their pain God will usually send an envoy someone who is a prophetic and apostolic voice who represents the speakings of God becoming an agent of deliverance and when God brings the people out like he did in Egypt they cried unto the Lord and he raised Moses Moses went to his half-brother Ramesses who had now become the Pharaoh and demanded for an exodus of God's people my assignment tonight is just to share with us as an exhaustion not a deep study the ingredients for a true revival the ingredients that make for a territorial revival if these ingredients are not present there cannot be a move of God within a territory you desire to see the move of God in Onisha you desire to see the move of God in Anambra state and then the east of the Niger there are certain spiritual ingredients non-negotiable ingredients you desire to be mightily used by God many of you have come tonight with hearts open to receive all kinds of impartations usually when you find men who are unusually graced people say these are anointed men of God these are graced men of God but there are spiritual requirements and I hope that within the few minutes that I have to share with you as we prepare to pray that God will place in your hands the keys that really sponsor the move of God in terms of personal revival and territorial revival why because there are many of you seated tonight the destiny of the move of God within your land is upon your shoulder and you have to understand this are we blessed there is a reason why people never see the move of God past religion past church as we call it there is a reason why it looks as though in a whole generation God may just find one two or three people it's not his intent to just have such few people it's not only his desire that all men be saved it's also his desire that all men rise to the fullness of their potential a man of God will say in Christ everybody has a high calling there are no low callings in Christ but I think respectfully speaking one of the deceptions that has permeated the body of Christ is the fact that there is no price to be paid to be used by God anything of value comes with a price the refusal to admit and understand that there is a genuine price for revival there is a genuine price for the anointing you want to access ancient mantles you want to be used by God in mighty ways precious people of God there is a price to be paid the first price if you want to host a revival in your life and across a territory is the price of consecration and brokenness price number one brokenness more than fasting more than prayer you can fast and pray as a religious activity brokenness every time God finds a people broken you know what it means to be broken to be broken means to come to a point where you acknowledge the all-surpassing value 
of Jesus the Christ above ambition, above money, above titles, above preaching, above prayer. All of these things come out from him. Brokenness is when we give up our idolatry, the service and the worship of men and things, and we return to the one true God. You will never, never find a true revival until God finds the hearts of a people broken. God gave man a will. And you see, even at the expense of your eternal destiny, he allows you to make choices and he will respect your choice. When Satan decided to rebel against God, God respected his choice, but there was a consequence. I can tell you this, by the grace of God, I am a student of revivals. I have studied revivals across continents. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few in their lifetime before they passed on. There is a reason why many people never experience the move of God across a territory. Guess how the Bible puts it. My people, even though they are called by my name, first requirement they must humble themselves. Very hard for man to humble himself because we are like the Laodicean church. I have everything. I am full. I am educated. I am intelligent. I am rich. I have no need for anything. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways. He says, then we lie here from heaven. And I will forgive their sins. And I will not just stop there. I will heal their land. You want to see a move of God in your family, your jobs, your businesses? You want to see repentance from idolatry and the worship of other gods? It takes hearts that are broken and contrite. It takes broken hearts, not men of God, to bring a revival. You can be a man of God, but if you are not broken, it will never. You see, we live in a world and we live in times where for many of us, Jesus is just the wisest option among the many options available. So whilst we choose him, we still keep other options, hoping if there be a rainy day, Jesus, then I keep my intelligence, I keep my idols, I keep my pride, and I watch what happens. You will never be able to host God with that kind of disposition. The jealousy of God will not allow him to be with anything in your life. If he is not absolutely low, then he will step back and honor your decision until life beats you to your knees and then you call for him again and he's ever ready to come. Most times, you see, people fast and pray, but they just do it for the religiosity of it in hope that they will bribe God by that spiritual activity into releasing power upon them and upon their territory. The motif is already corrupted from beginning. There is a state of man's heart that makes brokenness very necessary. Jeremiah chapter 17, please. We'll read from verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 17, please help us media. This is just an exhortation. Jeremiah chapter 17, we'll read from verse 9 and 10. Please read with me, it's projected if you can see. Let's read in concert. Ready? One, two, read. The heart and desperately wicked. Please keep that scripture there. We'll go shortly to the next verse. This is the, a verdict from the mouth of the Lord that the heart of man, no matter how sincere it looks, that there is a component in the heart of man that if not vetted by God, there are tendencies in the hearts of man. You see, the way the tendencies of the flesh work is that they require atmosphere and opportunity to manifest. Just because they have not manifested does not mean it is not there. You may never know that you have pride. You may never know you have lost. Just because an opportunity has not provided for the manifestation of that state, it does not mean it is not there. Who would have known that a young innocent shepherd called David 
will be the one to kill someone tomorrow and carry another man's wife you would have looked at that young man that is the kind of young man who all want to be a pastor in your church that is the kind of young man every lady here would want as a husband however that was a murderer right there in that bush so before you surprise yourself God says come let me vet you and he said Lord based on my parameters I think I am all right and he says you need to understand something there is no process of time with me I am both Alpha Omega I see tendencies so before you destroy what I want to do with you come and submit yourself and let the maker make you the heart of man you don't have to be wicked it is a state of the fallen man you never knew that titles matter to you until the day they gave you one and then someone forgot to call you that title and you are even surprised yourself wow so this is the reason why I can't sleep you never knew that money can mean a lot when you are poor don't say you are humble you don't have anything to to, to contrast pride with you see for instance There are no limits to the tendencies that are in the hearts of men. So every time we come to God, Lord, anoint me, use me. He says, I want to use you, but not this version of you. There is something I must do to you. I must make you. I must break you. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. The first five chapters, we see a true prophet of God, not a fake prophet, not a false prophet, called Isaiah. He began the book of Isaiah by prophecy. Isaiah chapter 6 please verse 1 and then we'll return back to this scripture to wrap it up the first requirement for a revival both personal and territorial brokenness from chapter 1 to 5 we see him prophesy if you are told Isaiah as a man of God that something is wrong with you he will insult you and say go and look at the track record of my prophecies and all that I'm doing but then the Bible says in chapter 6 and verse 1 in the year that Uzziah died it says, I also, I saw the Lord. Isaiah saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. He saw the train of his robe. Because in ancient times, the length of the train of a king's robe was a reflection of his majesty. And in this case, he said the train of his robe to the temple. And then Isaiah was broken by himself. And here was his verdict, a prophet. He said, woe is me. I am undone this is not condemnation this is awareness in the presence of the Holy God you know you have met God when you see something to change in your life if you claim you met God and you go back with nothing that requires change it's not the God of the Bible you met this is where I have a problem with many many supposed divine encounters I have met Jesus I will share with you my story let me tell you if, if the Jesus of the Bible appears to you it will take you more than one year to be back as a normal human being again the first thing that happens to you in the presence of his holiness you will be aware of the extent of your filth and inadequacy it's not condemnation that is the beauty and the power that comes with you are we blessed And Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips. He said, I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. You thought God would say, no, 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 that's too much humility. It was true. And he picked this are happening in the earth does not mean heaven is recognizing it. Just because conferences are happening, Apostle Joshua Selman moving around and preaching does not mean heaven is recognizing it. This is where the deception of ministerial activities destroy people. You can be advancing, men can be clapping and heaven is still saying, who shall we send? Who shall we send? Who shall we send? Oh, I'm a great man of God. Who shall we send? And for the first time, Isaiah realized that he was just doing his thing 
He said, here am I and me. But the first law is that in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. There's something that must die for you to see. In the year that my pride died, I saw. In the year that my search for fame died, I saw. You will never see him with those luggages. You want to see him, the price is death. The price for life is death. Please listen to what I'm telling you. You want to host God's power? There are certain levels of impartation that you cannot, it's not, it's not just, it's not everything that is transferable. There are things that you have to dig your well through death by yourself. Are we blessed? You want to speak over a territory and you want the entire angelic, um, angelic family to back you. You want to speak and principalities and powers who hear? No. It will take more than English and more than good dressing. It takes death. You ask the sons of Skiba. They most likely have attended a few lectures and a few conferences. And they said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Brokenness. Listen to me. Brothers and sisters, God is calling us to a higher and a deeper level. Brokenness, where at the end of it, all you want is Jesus. Not church, not man of God, not titles, not fame. You know the end of your brokenness when the only thing left is Jesus not Jesus and fame not Jesus and power give me you everything else can wait give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord give me you Lord give me you Lord When I began my journey with the Lord, I will continue to say it. My intention was never to be a man of God. My intention was not fame, recognition, power. All I wanted was to know him with all my heart. I desired him more than preaching. You can use God as a ladder for fame. Because you hear that men of God sit in front. That motivation would drive you to 40 days fasting. From day one, you were already wasting your time. If God shows you mercy in that fast, he will lead you to the correct scripture that resets your understanding. There are many of you seated here. Whilst you watch us come with the protocol and you watch the men of God, that ambition, you desire to also sit in front. Let me advise you on time. You must submit and allow the Holy Ghost purify that motive. In priesthood, there is honor, but that's not the motivation. Till today and till forever, I love him more than preaching. I love him more than fame. You've heard me say it. I will cancel ministry 1,000 times. Preserve my relationship. And his presence. There is nothing in my life. And may God forgive me if I'm lying. But there is nothing in my life today. That I cannot surrender to him. Absolutely nothing. In a heartbeat. And you believe me. This man standing before you. These things have been tested. God is not a fool. When you speak like that. He will test it. Abraham. Take now thy son. Thine only son whom thou lovest. Go and offer him the mountain. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, be glorified. You 
want to see the move of God in Onisha, the first key is not just to say, God, come. The first key is to become like the woman with the alabaster box. She took her pride, she took her pain, she took her wealth and broke it at the feet of Jesus. She didn't pour some and kept some. When you love business more than his presence, you will never see him come. When you love ministry more than his presence, when you love anointing more than his presence, whether Jesus is there or not, once there is anointing, you are interested. Am I wasting your time? You must value the presence of God. You must value your time of intimacy with God. Your time alone with him. Can I tell you this? With all due respect to those co-laborers in the gospel, if a major part of your life is on the pulpit, you are in trouble already. A major part of the life of a minister must be behind the veil. That is what gives power to what you do here. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. This was how I began my pursuit. I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for preaching. I was desperately touching for Jesus. Desperately. Then, you've heard my story. The night he came to me. King of Kings. I know he's alive. Number one, because the word of God says so. But number two, I have seen him. The resurrected Christ. He didn't follow a door to come in. Came. When God wants to come, nothing stops him. More. A door is for you, not for him. When Jesus came into my room, never said a word, yet I heard everything he was saying. That was when I Realize in the realm of the spirit that you do not have to talk to speak. That light is also a language. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the symbol. Now listen very carefully. I lay down flat on the ground like a dead man. I'm standing before his majesty. This is the man preachers stand to represent every Sunday. My goodness, do they know who he is? Jesus, not an archangel. He stood before me. How I did not die. The only thing I can tell you is that it's like it's the son standing before an ant. And after a while, he stretched his right hand towards me and a beam of light light that no human being can stand close to and survive that light entered me all of it when it entered me it left the next time i took my bible i saw things that i never learned what is this what is happening to me Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands Your majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your in the presence of your majesty 
I share this with you for a reason. It's not to brag. Because many of you, I'm explaining to you the encounters you have been having. And to let you know that this spirit of revival coming upon your territory is real. I have met many of the saints that have departed. Now, that is not the basis of our confidence. The basis of our confidence is scripture. But I can tell you. In one of the encounters, the Lord came to me and said, Son, from today I give you my presence as a gift. And then I saw this angel standing. He said, he will walk with you. And I said, what is his name? And he said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. That's what is responsible for these things you are seeing. I'm explaining it to you so you don't think everybody is some false prophet somewhere. No, no, no. But it takes hunger. In one of these encounters, I was speaking with a man who came to me and he was talking to me. And when he was done, he turned and was going. And I called him, I said, sir, you did not tell me your name. He turned back to me and smiled and said, Paul. And he turned and kept moving. You see, this is an election of grace. This is why we do not boast. There is no place for the flesh. You know it is God that is transforming you because it leaves a deposit of humility in your life. You are aware of your sheer inadequacy outside of his hell. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So when you hear Apostle Joshua Selman, it's not because there is anything in, our, in, in us by our own strength. Our sufficiency is of Christ who has made us able ministers able ministers hallelujah are we blessed now so the first key is genuine brokenness you must get to a point where you love God more than money not just that you had that when you come to God you make clean money so you came to him because you don't want to make dirty money it's still idolatry If he asks you to shut down your business for his presence, can you do that? Hmm. If he asks you to shut down your reputation for the sake of his majesty and glory, can you do that? Sorry about that. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand, If it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. There's the prayer now. Will you search me through and through till my heart it says nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure 
of your royalty, O morning star, you the earth. Everything, everything, Lord, you are. Everything. Hear me, man of God. You want God to do much with you? Forget about ministry and focus on his presence. That's how to be in ministry. You must love his presence more than preaching. I love him from the depth of my heart. If he never blesses me, I owe him my life. It is true. This is not just some man of God talk on stage. Believe me. You want to find power with God? You want God to use you within a dispensation? My brothers and my sisters, it's more than laying on of hands. It's more than a bottle of oil. The price for life is death. The price for all of God is all of you. Not your money. Not your offering. You can give God your offering to carry that nonsense. It's your heart I want first. This is the key that controls superior dimensions of the power of God of revival. On it shall hear me until God finds men and women who can be broken, men who can hold on to the four horns of the altar without shame and say, Lord, this is your boy coming to you. They call me their man of God, but your boy is here again. I'm right here where you met me before you lifted me no matter the lifting I'm not stupid I still realize and God says you are doing this for me you are ready to step into another level you want to see the power of God in your churches you want to see the power of God as you preach it is not by gimmicks no There's gonna be a great awakening. In, there's gonna be a great revival in your land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Hear me? every time the move of god is about to happen in a territory there are two spirits that are always released within that territory personified in two men number one is called enoch enoch represents the spirit of intimacy and hunger it says an enoch walked with god the seventh man from creation Genesis chapter 5, I believe, and verse 24, thereabout. Enoch walked with God. Not Enoch built churches. The greatest testimony is that Enoch walked with God to the point where he was not. Preachers, let us not let ministry become an idol. You want to command power? some of you god is speaking to you you have been busy preaching from the day engagements came you left him you have been working for god and yet you stopped working with god a long time ago many of you your prayer groups intercessory groups you started as men with hunger at the back of a tree but now that they've identified you you started preaching here and there you don't care it doesn't matter let me move my destiny forward you say brokenness god is calling you there are many of us to repent is not a word for sinners to repent is how we are transformed. Realign back to the standard. 
Many of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I want to tell you what happened in your city by prophecy. While men slept, the enemy came. He cannot sow when you are alive. He said, awake thou that sleepest. While men slept, you know how people sleep? Satan occupies them with activities that are outside of Christ. Just keep making the money. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Just keep making the fame. Just keep adding credentials. And then the enemy steps in and begins to plant seeds. Seeds of rebellion. Seeds of spiritual laxity. He discerns that there is a family that should carry the next prophet over on each other. And very quickly, he plants a seed in that young man. Some of them, the devil destroyed their destiny by sending them abroad. They had no business going anywhere. But he relocated them fast. They called it breakthrough. Like Saul of Tarsus, they went out of the will of God. Can I tell you this? Look at me. One of the reasons why God is organizing this conference this year, you may not know. He's honoring the cry and the covenant of those who died serving the purposes of God. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Listen, your territory is full of the history of men and women who live for the gospel. Some of them died and never had that reward. That is the burden that came on this man. It's, you, sometimes you don't even know what is moving you. And God says, no, I must find a witness in Onisha. The blood of someone is speaking and saying, Lord, arise. There has to be a move of the Spirit. The anthem of our nation says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain. There are missionaries who serve God. They never tasted of the honor of priesthood and they went. Reverend Canon, you are crying. But let me tell you, the burden that is on you is more than just a man trying to make a name. It's prophecy. Many of you here, you are walking. You just think you are moving, but there is an ancient prophecy driving you. That thing making you not to sleep when others, when others are sleeping, you cannot sleep. It's more than you. It's more than an ambition. It's prophecy. Enoch is crying within your territory. The spirit of intimacy. Where are the men and the women who will hunger after God? Your spiritual climate is saturated with the spirit, the cry. There is a cry of the spirit over on each other, over the east of the Niger. Where are those who must arise? in this season in power to love and hunger after God men and women alike
please sit down. I shared with you the dream that I had this morning. Every time I step into a territory, the Holy Spirit will reveal to me what he desires to do. I went to bed yesterday and in the dream of the night, I was taken somewhere, I don't know where within your region, and I saw graves. That's what I saw. Suddenly there was like light from heaven and graves began to open. This is what I saw. I saw people that were dead coming back to life. Your city will not only be known for business, it will be known as careers of fire. There will be restoration of mantles and graces. It's not only buying and selling. No, fishers of men, makers of destinies. Please sit down for a minute. We're about to pray. There are two spirits that foreign revival. Number one is Enoch, a representation of hunger and passion and fire. The second spirit is Elijah, the spirit of prayer and supplication that restores the ordinances of God and the patterns of God again. He said before the great and terrible day of the Lord Elijah will come again when John came to forerun Jesus he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah prayer supplication prayer that opens the heavens Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, he says. Please hear me, believers. God is not wasting your time tonight. The revival that will come out from this night will surprise you. Once again, the altar of the Lord will be built because fire is about to come from heaven. When the prophets of Baal tried from morning till night, the Bible says when it was the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah said, build me with 12 stones. Let me remind God of his covenant. Now watch this. Please sit down. We have to pray because I need to minister to you now. We have to work with time. Just a few minutes and we're done. I don't intend to keep you. Hear this. The first assignment of Elijah is to restore the patterns of God. Because you see, the spirit of the Antichrist that is represented in that she goddess called Jezebel is a spirit that attempts to frustrate the purposes of God and empower the prophets of Baal. Under the leadership of Jezebel, she is a spirit that seeks government. She is activated only when she marries the king. The Bible talks about her in Revelation 18. That in one hour, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. It's become a habitation of demons. The kings and the merchants of the earth who have lived luxuriously through their fornication with her. That goddess that sits upon a horse. The antichrist system, Jezebel. It says all the kings will bemoan her and said in one hour is your judgment come. Jezebel is a businesswoman. The Bible now begins to list all the things that she sells. And one of the things she sells is the souls of men. Hear me. There must be a restoration of the spirit of prayer within your territory. There must be a restoration. Those of you who are on campus, read your book study but in addition to your study don't leave god behind anything minus god is nothing there are families right now hearing me and i'm speaking apostolically go back and restore the altar of prayer again before you made it you prayed in the night before you slept when you woke up in the morning now i am busy it's a deception because an attack is coming 
every time an attack is coming the spirit of fear and the spirit of carelessness and coldness comes upon a people while men slept for some of you this is not how you started with God when you started with God your fire how dare you miss times of prayer how dare you miss times of the word how dare you can listen to worship for hours but right now five minutes and you've slept it's an attack wake up the altars that fought your father have seen that you are rising to become a voice and they are now coming to you they want to bring you down Elijah Enoch intimacy and passion with God prayer and supplication because nothing happens in this side of God's kingdom until there is a union between the spirit and the bride it is the spirit and the bride that tells the word come when the spirit says healing come the bride on earth must echo it to healing come for healing to come when the spirit says revival come the bride must also say revival come it is the spirit and the bride the spirit is ever willing to come upon your territory but there must be brides enough brides indeed who are ready to say maranatha god in a new way come upon the land of onicha can i tell you this you will begin to see revivals break out in marketplaces people are buying and selling suddenly the power of god comes on someone and he's listening to a message he will come on his knees and say even though i just bought something from you lead me to jesus people will wake up with dreams and start running on the street by sunday when you come to your church your gate is closed but you will find people holding on to the gate and crying i don't know the name of what is happening to me but i need to repent i need jesus Please hear me. Please hear me. We're about to pray. I may not be able to mention all the other ones because our time is gone. But sufficient is the charge for tonight. We need a restoration of hunger and love for God. Onisha, do not lose the spiritual heritage God has given you to the devil. You now see that when your spiritual life goes down, it's a matter of time your business will start having issues issues you can't explain you are losing money anyhow you are not even explaining someone is cheating you someone is defrauding you they are all symptoms of something that is going wrong in the realm of the spirit i've come like i said to join faith with all the fathers within the land all the veterans of the gospel and together we are going to lift up a banner that says Jesus is still king over Onisha. And this night we will announce to every devil, Onisha is not an idol worship place. An is for Jesus. And every home is for Jesus. Thank God for what the fathers worship. But here comes a generation that only believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the son of the living God but like I taught in the morning cheap confession is not where it stops there must be grace to defend what we are saying is that true so on it shall hear me let every other name fade away let every other name fade away till there's only four things will happen now very quickly number one listen carefully I requested by the spirit that we bring our prayer requests four things very quickly number one 
is we're going to be praying and then I will be ministering to the sick I may not have the time to prophesy because our time is gone and we have to respect the time but I want to pray for the sick and I want to pray for people who are oppressed miracle signs and wonders are a revelation of number one the love of the father number two the power of God I believe in miracles I believe the man standing before you is a living miracle there was a time I was diagnosed with a fungal infection that literally ate my head and it was as though hair would never grow again I know what it means to taste of the power of God I am a miracle So I want you to be prepared to wave goodbye to every infirmity. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Never suffer long with evil. Evil always comes pregnant. When you host it, it will give birth to many other disasters in your life. So I'll pray for the sick. If time permits, we could take one or two testimonies. Number two, the second thing that will happen here is we're going to be praying for the requests this is the most accurate representation of your desires and we're going to be praying and declaring over it number three like I requested in the morning I may respectfully request even just for a minute or two maybe one or two of the fathers of faith the veterans of the gospel to come stand with me to represent the unity of the church in Onisha we're going to close that divide that has given Satan allowance and we're going to speak over the territory the final thing we're going to do is I'm going to stand apostolically and every gate over this city that is closed. We are opening the two-leaf gates for every good thing that must come into the city. Are we in agreement? Please rise up on your feet. Prayer point number one. Father, arise like the mighty God that you are. Bring me healing. Bring me deliverance right now. Lift your voice and pray. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Give me an encounter tonight in the name of Jesus. Give me a supernatural visitation. Hallelujah. Now listen. Acts chapter 10, please, and verse 38. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Peter is teaching the first message preached to the Gentiles. This will be the first salvation of the Gentiles. This was in the house of Cornelius. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, it says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible records that he went about doing good. It takes the anointing to do good. It takes more than a good heart. Went about doing good, listen carefully, and healing not they that were sick, they that were oppressed. Every sickness is an oppression. Every sickness. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Listen very carefully, please. Wherever you are trusting God for a miracle, all through this magnificent theater and the, so many outside, I'd like you to lay your hands there right now. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Go ahead. Now arise, oh Lord, would you come to your resting place? You and the ark of your might. Then we will rejoice. As we clothe in your righteousness, we celebrate your love. Listen, I want you to believe. I want to pray for you. 
stand in agreement and shout a loud amen when I begin to pray the healing power of Jesus is mighty in this place two ladies who are going to shout very loud to the hearing of everybody the moment that happens the healing power of Jesus will begin to move I don't know why these things happen these are signs and wonders the Lord does it to bring glory to himself now I'm ready to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ My God, such such anointing flowing to people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I rebuke every devil of infirmity. Every spirit that is back of help them, please. Every spirit that is back of any sickness. In the name of Jesus, I command that you go now. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I speak to your body. Be healed now. Be healed, my God. Be healed now. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed in the name of Jesus. There's someone you have a problem with the left side of your ear. I'm seeing the power of God touching you right now. The left side of your ear be healed in the name of Jesus every blood condition here that needs to be changed we change it now in the name of Jesus the Lord is ministering to me I'm seeing someone I don't know what is wrong with the left your right your right up, up from your kneecap I don't know if it's a sprain of something of that sort the power of God is touching you right now I'm seeing a gentleman, your rib, just around this area. I don't know what has been happening. I don't know if you broke it or you've been having severe pain. Right now, as I'm praying, the power of God is touching you. Yeah. Migraines, help them, please. My God, the power of God is touching people here. Migraine, headaches, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. Yeah. Everyone 
with any malignant growth around your body fibroids tumors of all sorts by the power that raised Christ from the dead I command they disappear from your body now high blood pressure low blood pressure be healed now the Lord is showing me two ladies I'm seeing you have for one you have like a lump for the other you have multiple lumps around the breast area after the prayer I want you to check it that devil must leave you now in the name of Jesus Christ help them don't worry we'll take testimonies just just be patient now anyone on a wheelchair inside or outside you're on a wheelchair or you're on a crutch stand up now in the name of Jesus Christ rise up and walk now there's someone I'm seeing you have I don't know if it's palpitations when you stand you keep breathing and very heavy breath it looks like something is wrong with you the power of God is touching you right now the power of God is touching you right now um, please don't be embarrassed you don't have to come out I'm praying I'm seeing a woman whether is the time for your monthly circle or not you are having severe bleeding it can come at any time this has you've lost blood this has this has even affected you health wise right now that bleeding stops this moment in the name of Jesus help her help her that devil leaves you now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone I don't know if it's a growth or some sort of discomfort around your throat like a swelling in the name of Jesus let it go now the Lord is showing me someone you don't see very well from a distance I don't know what the problem is but right now the power of God will come on you and you will begin to see me clearly from where you are in the name of Jesus Christ every chest problem be healed now I'm seeing one two three four five people in my vision I'm seeing pile pile very for one there's a very severe case of pile you cannot even go to the toilet because it looks like you are just it looks like it's just some sort of hemorrhage or so in the name of Jesus right here I declare be healed now the Lord is showing me someone you've been seeing dead people the people that have died and gone every night they come to you and it's like they are calling you I declare every covenant that connects you up in the name of Jesus you are delivered from the power of the grave now hear me whether I mention your case or not we're going to do this very quickly whether I mention your case or not be healed right now in Jesus name now for the sake of time we'll just walk with a few people and then the rest they can share it after now I'm going to ask you to check yourself many of you even whilst you fell on the, under the anointing you found out that miracles right now have happened to you when there are people like that please let's have one or two officials I'd like you very quickly to allow them as you check yourself to just come here we'll take a few testimonies to let on each other know that Jesus is Lord and then we'll pray on this and we'll be ready for the final impartation is that fine now very quickly check yourself let's celebrate them as they come please check yourself are you seeing miracles happening my God on each other is this how you celebrate miracles check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you please make your way to the front make your way to the front don't be ashamed clear the way for them for those who are outside Jesus is healing people keep coming keep coming keep coming look miracles are happening here let's have a few people please allow them come allow them come check yourself right now do what you couldn't do you found out there is a miracle on each other celebrate Jesus people are coming God is able to do just what he said he will do he's got us so still every promise 
around here? No, from Bo. Where is that? The next is there a place like that? Yes. The next town. I'm so sorry. The reason why we ask like this is because sometimes when things happen like this, you know, sometimes people think it's stage managed, so sometimes it's good to just find out their locations. Are we together? You came with this crutch? Yes, How I'm coming. I'm coming now. No, just now, 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 now. You are, you are just arriving. Yes, yes. Hold on, hold on. Show us, hold on. Show us how you were walking before. How were you walking? Look at this. This is how you were walking. Now let the devil see how you're walking. Lift it up and let the devil see how you walk now. Move, walk. Look at this. Hallelujah. Watch this. Give me the crutch. You see, my brothers and my sisters, watch this. When miracles happen like this, it's more than just showing that a man of God is anointed. This is, if Jesus Christ, someone who was not even here when I was preaching. Ah. Creator of the universe, what can you do? Another miracle here. What happened, Canon? Hold on. He was really watching the miracle when it happened. He saw how the oh, he was, you were there. It was just like an elite shock on the woman. On the woman, and she began to. She walk. fell down and was shaking. You and saw her. I saw her. All of us saw her outside. All glory to Everything God. that will not allow you go forward, I command it must give way now. Amen. It must give way now. It must give way now. Hallelujah. God bless you, madam. May it never return to you again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Please sit down for a few minutes. Yes, please. She used to have breast lump. Give her the mic. By the What's your name? I'm Lillian. Please settle down so we can hear. What's your name? Lillian. What happened to you? I have a very... Um, like you had a breast lump. For how long? <laughs> Since early this year, January. Early this year. But Touch it now. It's no breast longer It's gone. Yes. Look at this. <laughs> Completely gone. Yes, sir. My name is Sukumeka Esther. Okay. I can you live, where do you live, madam? On the child. Okay. I, I have a very long here, big one, very. You powerful. have a big lump. Yes, for the moment you are praying. Around your abdomen. Yes, sir. What happened now? It does the Oh come on! Oh come on! Look at this. Run, madam. Check yourself. Hold on. Hold on. Check yourself. Press it. No pain. Please come, woman of God. Please come. 
I'd like us to check, just verify, where was, it, where was the pain before? It was a big lump. For how long? Huh? Two years. Check it now. Any pain? No, no. Any pain? Yes, please. Hold on. Okay, very quickly. My left ear, I noticed some sounds in my left ear. And when, when you were praying, you mentioned about the left ear. And now my ear is clear. Completely clear. My God. Yes, please. My All these are testimonies. Oh, dear. Okay, what will, what will happen is, um, don't worry. Even if you cannot testify, we'll just note you. We just want the devil to see that Jesus is still alive in Onisha. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, go ahead. Okay, my name is Miracle. Um, I was reading... Your name is Miracle? Yeah. What a beautiful name. So, I was breathing heavily at the back. I almost died. But if you you were? I was breathing heavily at the back. You were okay. breathing? Yes, yeah, okay. heavily at the back. I almost died. But if you said the breathing should stop. <laughs> Completely. Breathe in and out. In and out. You made Any pain. Like in and out. No pain. It goes forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Yes, please. My name is Divine. I've been having migraine for over two weeks now. Come again? I've been having migraine for over two weeks. Migraine? Yes, sir. As soon as you mentioned my case, something like an object just flew out. Of just me. flew out? Yes, sir. Every tree that has not been planted by God, we uproot it now. We uproot it now. Yes, please. My name is Onye Chiku. I had high problem before, but you had high gone. problem. How old are you? Ten, ten plus. Okay, and you had high problem already. That devil is a liar. And what happened to you now, my dear? It is gone. Completely, you can see me. Listen, let me teach you something about miracles. Miracles don't just show that a man is anointed. Miracles have messages tied to it. If God can open the eyes of a lady like this, that means he's telling you the spirit of revelation is also within reach. You see that now? It's more than just the physical miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. I, I came here with a boil in my eye. You came here with a boil? Yes. In I your eye? Yes. I'll pour pains in my throat and my green. And the now, the boil is gone. I can't even see anything on your eyes. Listen, for some of you, what you are watching here at this crusade, carry that same miracle back to your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. When they ask you and say, when did this start? Tell them you came for the quarry site conference. And here you contacted grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. My name is Promise. I have a pain at the left ear of mine. Yes. And I can't see what is written anywhere, but now I can see and you I can, can see hear it completely. Pain. It will never return to you again in the name of Jesus. Yes, Praise please. That. My name is Shinyere. I used to have something on my neck. I was about to go for the surgery to remove it. But you just pray and the thing, there is no more anything. It's gone now. Yeah. Shout hallelujah, you. It's gone completely. Okay, very quickly. Yes, let me hear her testimony. Does she have a testimony? Please, quickly, quickly. Let's. I've been adjusting. having this serious pain on my right knee for a very long time. Okay. And I can't really stand for a long time. And right so, now? And right now it has gone Check when it. you mentioned Check it. it. I can't Any pain? Any pain? Let the devil see you doing it. No pain. It will never return to you again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. My name is Chukunye Dabrechi. Just this uh, afternoon and a few hours ago, I was complaining to my friend that I want to fall down and my head is actually aching me as in, it was aching me as if I want to fall down along that road. What but happened now? Pray, it fizzled away. What happened now? Completely fizzled, gone. Yes, in the name of Jesus, it never returns to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. My name is Saudi Haramaka. I used to have glaucoma. I had this glaucoma. One. Yes, sir. But now I can see. You couldn't better. see very well when you came here. But faintly, but now I can see far You can better. see clearly. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> Can you see my watch? Can you see this? Yes, sir. As small as it is. Yes, sir. Can you see this? Yes, sir. My God, give Jesus praise. That's a miracle. Some of you are medical doctors here. Glaucoma is a very serious condition. It never returns to you, madam, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Yes, Apostle, please. wonderful testimony here. Yes, sir. please. I have a friend. It's good. She has cancer. Breast cancer. She has breast cancer. The thing was done over her. It was not her up. I told her to come here, but she couldn't make it. So I told her I would pray for her. The man of God told her she should take her, but I told her then. She not told me that she's healed. She can't find the cancer. Then. Where is the friend? Where is she? My goodness, my God. Where is the friend? The friend is in school. Where is the school? That's what I'm saying. Umunze. What's that? A, a school in Anambra. Is there a school like far. that? Yeah. A very far. Facet. And right now she can't find it. Oh dear. Hear me. Every trouble you left at home, before you get home, meet a miracle waiting for you there. In the name of Jesus, meet a miracle waiting for you there. I come by the power of the Holy Ghost. Everything that you left that is trouble at home, go back and meet a miracle waiting for you. Please, let's have two or three, and then I'll pray a general prayer for everyone. Our time I'm is gone. Yes, please. My name is Sucho Chukuoko. I've been suffering from asthma for, for more than 20 years. Asthma? Uh, yeah. For more than 20 years? Yeah. For like two weeks now, I've been having, I've been, I'm finding it difficult to breathe well. Yes. The thing is even disturbing me now. After the prophetic word that came, I felt on the anointing. Yeah, Breathe I, in I'm, and out. Any pain? No. Asthma no. goes forever, no. never no. to return. No. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. My name is Miracle. Since childhood, I've been having novel pain. So, in um, 2018, I received hearing from Reverend Canon, Ike Bon, doing one day prayer. Okay. But after that, it's moved to my abnormal. Every month, we used to go to the hospital. But right now, I fell under the anointing and the pain that I used to and see. And it's gone it's completely. Gone. It's gone completely. It never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I am Isuchuku. Uh, I, I have severe uh, pains in my, on my waist for okay. like more than five years. Okay. And I came here sick after preparing for this program. So, uh, and as you are praying, uh, I don't even know, I had to run to the step and staircase and sit, uh, yes. sit down there. So, I'm sitting down here when you started praying, I don't know, everything changed. Uh, Completely. Uh, I can't even tell. It never returns to you again in Jesus' name. Yes, please. That I'll be feeling very, very, very weak when I came here. But now I can no feel it because oh, the, the weakness will just make me fall down. People will just be running for me. But now I cannot feel hold it. Hold on, hold on. Understand what this lady is saying. Sometimes you just fall down like that. Fall down. And people because run away from you. We just be running away from me. Oh my God. Now imagine if this was your child. And now what happened? I cannot feel that. Completely. I cannot feel it. Father, let it never return again in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Please, the next person. Very My good. name is Watchful Blessing. I do have severe pains on this side and the pains all over my two legs. Yes. And I do sleep with dead people, even my dead husband. He's oh always God. sleeping with me and my, my dead elder sister and my mother. Always, since three months, this thing is happening to me. But now I am here. Hear me. The living and the dead have no relationship. Let me prophesy to you. If there is any dead person coming to you in dreams, is the spirit of the grave trying to call you. I stand in the name of Jesus on which I hear the word of the Lord.
from anything that has to do with the spirit of the dead in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Gladys George. I came from Asaba. Today, I came here with our goiter. You this came here with goiter? Yes. This thing Medically I'm verified? No, I cannot even feel the love. Medically thing. verified? You went to the hospital? Yes. Check her. I can't no, see anything there. Look at this. Look at this. Goita is disappeared. Yes. Come on now. Look at this. My name is Mwenke Joshua. I came from Anambra I came from Anambra State. From last year, September, I've been having a lot of pain. From this, my joint to here. I can't walk well. So in my school, I told our what? schools, I told our president how, we, how I felt. Because it, it makes me not to perform well because I, I was in a school. So due to the, the, the kind of pains that I'm in here, I can't walk. But Your when legs? you are praying, yeah, from this joint, my right oh, you leg. you can't walk well? Yes, yes. Walk now. Walk now. Walk now. You can even see the legs. That's all right. You can even see the other legs. My friend, look at me. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. The life and the miracle working power of Jesus. Let's take one more. Don't worry, my dear people. I know that there are people right to the door. Just be patient. I will speak a word. And then maybe in the other sessions, there should be room for these testimonies. It doesn't matter through who God brought the testimony. The most important thing is that Jesus has been glorified tonight. Yes, please, go ahead. My name is Blessing. Before, I don't believe in miracles. You didn't believe in miracles? I was asking God because I had short-sightedness. After you said that, someone that does not see from far, I fell. And I stood up. I, I don't believe it. But I, that I was just saying, just like I just believe, believe this time. And I you said, we should come. I know I know how to come because I believe that maybe it's, it's a lie. But as I was coming, my eyes were just clearing. Your eyes was clear. This young lady didn't believe in miracles. Ah! I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Hey, miracles everywhere. Right now, I see miracles All of you, I'm sorry because of our time. I pray for all of you who have received miracles. In the name of Jesus, you can go ahead and testify in the other sessions and you can also testify in your local assemblies. Like I said, the most important thing is that Jesus was lifted and glorified. More than the vessel that he used, the most important thing is to know that Jesus is alive. And let me tell you, miracles are real. They still happen. They have not ended. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I stretch my hands over all of you who have been healed, who have received miracles. In Jesus' name, the miracles remain permanent. In Jesus' name, the miracles remain permanent. Are you ready to pray now? Please rise up on your feet. It's time for someone's destiny to be opened. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Many of you, what you have written here are death sentences. Don't worry, still come, come with them. If there's anyone who has not dropped it, please be patient. We're praying. I believe with all my heart, this was a revelation that God gave me. And every time we stand in agreement praying, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to believe in the power of prayer. Stretch your hands here whilst we pray and declare to yourself that these Egyptians I see today, I see them no more forever. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Arise, O mighty God. Arise, O mighty God. Let there be miracles, all kinds of miracles, miracles of fruitfulness.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to stand in agreement with me. Father, as a united body of Christ over on each other, regardless denominational affiliation, together as the body of Christ, we name the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray over every request that is here. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray and prophetically declare that every request here is hereby turned into a testimony. Every request here is hereby turned into a testimony. Hear me? Every man that must let you go for this prayer to be answered, we compel them to let you go now. And any man who says over his dead body for this to be turned to testimonies, may the earth open and swallow them. My God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches in glory, he will put his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, in the name of Jesus, the same way I am standing on your prayer request, everything that has risen above you, we bring it under your feet. Every shame and every reproach comes under your feet now. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, if, if you will allow, maybe just, let's just have two or three people. I would want at least the fathers of faith. We're about to speak over the land and then I'll do the final impartation and we're done. But you see, there are things like I shared in the morning that cannot be done no matter how powerful and how anointed you are. It would take the corporate anointing. And so if, if you do not mind, if we can just have one or two or three of our fathers to just come and stand. They are going to be declaring as touching their authority. Please, let's honor them as they come. Onisha, learn to honor the fathers. They are going to be making decrees. Please get another mic. Do we have? Celebrate your fathers as they come. Celebrate your fathers as they come. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Please listen. The fathers are standing here as a prophetic sign that the body of Christ in Onicha and Anambra is coming into a greater level of oneness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two, I want you to believe in every declaration that the fathers are going to be making over the land. Hallelujah. Okay. Please celebrate one of the fathers as he comes up. I want you to be patient. This is a prophetic conference. Hallelujah. And so, I'm going to be handing the mic to them as they make that declaration for uh, while you are receiving. Make sure that your children connect in the spirit. Make sure that everything, your business, whatever it is. I tell you, after this conference, this land cannot remain the same. By this, by this privilege of the position of the fathers within this territory, let an end come to jealousy, to fighting. Can I be honest with you? We will not all do the same thing. But regardless what we do, I have come, like I said, sent by God to stand in faith with our fathers and everybody to say we are better together. We are better together. What I cannot see, another person can see. And we must be able to shelve our differences and stand. Hallelujah. So please receive the prayers of the fathers over you and over the land in Jesus' name.
Okay, let me, let me start. Um, let me also, first of all, say that mine will not just be a prophetic declaration. Since Monday when we started this program, there is a very big burden that God laid in my heart. Because I know that one of the greatest things hindering revival in our land is the issue of lack of love among ministers. We have envy, we have bickerings, we have schism, we have backbiting, we have gossip, we have jealousy, and I think we should address that spirit. Because once we address it and clear it from the air, I believe that the power of God will come down mightily upon us. The love of God. So I am led to make my declaration in this dimension. Father, as I raise my hand, over this city and over Anambra State, and that the spirit of love will rest upon your ministers in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, take away envy, take away jealousy, take away gossip, take away rivalry. Let your power be seen among your people. Let your love be felt among your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. We stand in the authority of the word of God and we prophesy great revival not just upon Anambra State but upon the eastern part of this country. We command a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. We decree end to idolatry. We decree end to evil practices. We speak and raise men of power and authority to lead in the affairs of this East. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, 164 years ago, you led your people and the seed of the gospel was soon here. This land. And from here, the light of salvation, the light of education, the light of commerce, the light of government, the light of development, spread all over Nigeria. How come that darkness is coming back in the form of idolatry and evil tradition to take over? God, you are restoring your church. Let the power of restoration start from this land again. Spread all over Ibo land. Spread all over eastern Nigeria. Spread to the north. Spread to the west. Spread to the south. Let the light shine. And let the power of darkness fall in the name of Jesus. Lord, I stand on the rock of ages to declare this night that all the forces of darkness that has taken over Anambra State, especially Onisha, be brought to die in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Wickedness in the high places. Shedding of blood. Snatching of lives, killings in families, husbands and divorces everywhere. 
Women are divorcing their husbands. Husbands are divorcing their wives. Today is the end of that in the name of Jesus. If you go around on Nietzsche, you will notice that our wives and young ones, especially the female, are now engaging themselves, initiating themselves in what they call Ohumiri. All the spirit of Ohumiri in Onicha, I condemn you in the name of Jesus. If we look around, you can see that members of secret court is taking over the church. All of you who are members of secret court, who are taking over the church, depart in the name of Jesus. I declare total liberation. Total liberation. Total liberation upon the church of God. Upon Onicha, upon an unprested, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father and our God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your presence. Father, we pray that. Even in this meeting, your spirit has gone out and impact has been made in the lives of the people. Father, we pray that from this place, we spread this power over and across an Anambra State so that your presence may be felt in our lives in Jesus' name. Deal with anything that war or fight against the kingdom values in Jesus' name. May those who name by your name may be people appointed and destined to make heaven in the end in Jesus' name. May we go out in this strength and be victorious in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, fall on us. Holy Ghost, fire, oh, I sing the day of Pentecost, fire, fall on us. Oh, I sing the day of Pentecost. Glorious Father, send down your consuming fire upon this dead to consume all altars of idolatry in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To consume all altars of witchcraft in Jesus' name. Amen. To consume all altars of bitterness in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, set your people free. When the Son sets people free, they are free indeed. May your children be free indeed. May your love be implanted. Father, let your light shine among your children in this state that they may see your glory and be drawn to you and remain in you forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just seal this prayer so that our fathers can go and sit down. You know, our father who started, he spoke about love. And I have been an advocate of love for a long time. No matter our differences, only we fight if we are alive. Hallelujah. Dead people don't fight. So we must see to it that we become promoters. Here and there, there will be needs to correct things, adjust things, but we must have a high level of allowance. Praise the name of the Lord. And I stand in the presence of our fathers over Onicha and then Anambra State, and we declare the spirit of mutual honor. 
may that spirit rest upon the servants of God and I decree and I declare that as a result of this meeting people who have all kinds of needless grievances let there be genuine reconciliation and I pray again by the power of the Holy Spirit may God preserve the fathers in this land they will live long to see their prayer answered we pray all of this in the name of the Father in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit Amen. Let's honor the fathers as they return back. Please celebrate them as they go to their seats. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you now. I believe in impartation. Impartation is a transference of graces. Hallelujah. Every time God sends a word to Jacob, it is because he intends for it to reach Israel like never before there are many of you here who are calling to the ministry of prophetic intercession may the mantle and the grace for that ministry let it rest upon you now don't worry just help those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out may that grace rest upon you now number two the anointing that shifts men to have divine encounters supernatural encounters may that grace some of you it will meet you in your place of retreat it will meet you whilst you sleep may that grace rest upon you now every dead prayer life here every dead word study life found to flames afresh in the name of Jesus let me pray for every ministry here there are women ministries here intercessory ministries prophetic ministries all kinds of ministries in the name of Jesus may the good hand of God rest upon you let me pray for campus fellowships and different groups in the name of Jesus, may the fire of God rest upon every campus in Anambra State. Yes. Every covenant with the earth, every covenant with the waters, every covenant with the air, programming evil and causes on people, I stand by the unction of the Spirit and I declare broken now. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Any enchantment that uses you as a point of contact, we declare that power broken now. Yeah. Hear me. The spirit of untimely death that follows families, just when people are about to emerge, they just die. I declare in the name of Jesus, may the grace for long life rest upon you. Now hear me please, the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work. There are evil spirits that make people labor just when they are about to rest. They either die or something happened. Whatever your hands have started, in your lifetime you will finish it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is no news that the east of the Niger has suffered in recent times the activities of terrorists, killing, disturbing the peace and the progress of people. I come by the rod of the higher priesthood and we speak to the earth. Everyone who does not name the name of Christ and will not give your territory peace, they go down now. The Bible says, and the stars fought for Deborah. It is not only men that will fight. May the elements of nature begin to fight anyone who does not name the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. 
any wrong association in your life programming you to become a shame a reproach to parents every spirit of dishonor and rebellion among children to parents we cast that spirit now yeah. hallelujah hear me every manifestation of irresponsibility among young people one of the blessings of the east is the blessings of responsibility and diligence god has placed grace upon these hands so any young man who is not doing anything is just a lazy person i pray that the spirit of laziness and irresponsibility will drive it far from your territory <laughs> hear me if there is anyone here who is in any kind of financial trouble a court case or you are in debt i don't care how you got there by the message of the god of david come out of it now come out of it now come out of it now you hear me once again let the spirit of evangelism genuine soul winning let the spirit of encounters moral excellence let it rest upon your land you have honored me in this land your fathers have graciously honored me may the honor that follows this office may it rest upon you may the honor that follows this office may it rest upon you hear me from today any man that fights you goes down instantly now let me speak over the territory Onicha and Ambra, hear the word of the Lord. Lift up your heads, oh ye gates. I speak to the tulip gates of this territory. No matter what has closed you, I hold the key of David and I declare, may the gates be open, open for development, open for the gospel, open for advancement, open for breakthrough open for increase it shall not be short day or night may you receive the forces of the gentiles in the name of jesus and finally by the privilege of god's grace i cannot end this without speaking over this humble vessel of god that was used by god and his precious wife the Bible says a worker is deserving of his wages. It took the cooperation of the Anglican Covenant and then the body of Christ. But there was a vessel. Every house is built by some man, even though God is the builder of all. Sir, I pray for you by the privilege of the election of grace, together with your dear wife, this level that you are, may this be the least you will ever be. We place a mantle of honor upon your life that in the name of Jesus, God will raise helpers, financial helpers, prayer helpers, wise counselors. Your children will eat from your sacrifice. There are many things you will not need to do for your children again because by your sacrifice, God will raise men to do it for them. And let me pray for everyone here who contributed. I understand that people gave money, people gave vehicles, others paid for all kinds of things. In the name that is above all names, God is not a fraudster. God is not a scammer. I speak over your life. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that ye having all sufficiency in all things, that you are bound to every good work. I prophesy increase over your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Finally, every business represented in Onisha, every business represented in Anambra State, I forbid you from going down. Yeah. Hear me? The wealth in this state will not only be managed by one person let it be three four generations of people together in the name of jesus christ 
the Lord bless you the Lord increase you the Lord honor you you will serve the Lord all the days of your life go from glory to glory in Jesus name I pray thank you very much Anisha God bless you where you are if you have any envelope for the apostle raise it up above your head while he stay here there are many of you that said we have something for him you have an offering a seat for the apostle just what said man bring it up above your head when we pray you drop it here bring it up above your head then all the we are beginning tomorrow morning by 6 a.m on the dots right reverend Aloysius Abu is in the house already while we are the ministry was going on, he walked in. All right, raise those prayer points up. Those um forms, partnership form you feel. Raise it up. In the name of Jesus Christ. On the sun grace, the sun unction. We never remain the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those who couldn't receive it, you will receive your own tomorrow. But those who have it now, I declare, you will have surplus, always surplus, more than surplus to always give. In the name of Jesus. So if you have anything for the apostle, drop it right here at the altar. If you have an offering, drop it in the baskets moving around.